he insisted that he pay, you know, a boarding fee. You know, he wanted to share in the cost of kind of keeping the home up. The library was James O'Kim Riley's favorite room. He loved being in this room. And it would be also another place where they do a lot of entertaining. His personal favorite poet was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. That's why there's also a bust of Longfellow in this room over on the right-hand side on top of the bookshelf. His favorite writer was Charles Dickens. We know from Magdalena that he would read aloud from Charles Dickens every Christmas Eve. The bookshelves in this room are all filled with uh, the books that belong to James O'Kim Riley, and so we know that these are the books he liked, these are the books he bought, and these are the ones he enjoyed. The chair over on the left-hand side of the room was often called Poet's Corner. In this very chair is where I would often read selections of my poems for guests in the house. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock, and you hear the kick and gobble of the strutting turkey cock, and the clacking of the guineas, clucking of the hens, and the rooster's hallelujah as he tiptoes on the fence. Oh, it's then the times a feller is feeling at his best, with the rising sun to greet him from a night of peaceful rest, as he leaves the house bareheaded and goes out to feed the stock. when the frost is on the pumpkin and the father's in the shock. There's something kind of hearty-like about the atmosphere when the heat of summer is over and the cooling fall is here. Of course, we miss the flowers and the blossoms on the trees and the mumble of the hummingbirds and buzzing of the bees. But the air's so appetizing, and the landscape through the haze of a crisp and sunny morning of the early autumn days is a picture that no painter has the color into mock. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. The husky, rusty rustle of the tossels of the corn and the rasping of the tangled leaves as golden as the morn. The stubble in the furries, kind of lonesome like, but still a preaching sermons to us of the barns they grow to fill. The straw stack in the midder, and the reaper in the shed, the hosses in their stalls below, uh, the clover overhead. Oh, it sets my heart a-clicking like the ticking of the clock when the frost is on the pumpkin. and the fodder's in the shock. Then your apples all is gathered, and the ones a feller keeps is poured around the cellar floor in red and yellow heaps, and your cider making's over. And your women folk is through with their mince and apple butter, and their souse and sausage too. I don't know how to tell it, but if such a thing could be as the angels wanting boarding and they called around on me, I'd want to accommodate them, all the whole enduring flock. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. When he moved in in 1893, he brought a lot of his own furniture with him. So James O'Kim Riley's bedroom has a lot of pieces in it that actually may be a little bit older than the home. His original writing desk is straight across from the doorway. That's where he composed many of his over 1,000 works of poetry. We also know that he liked to write in the bed here. Magdalena would write about coming up and finding him late at night, scribbling away on a little lap desk in his bed, surrounded by little scraps of paper. That's how he liked to work. That kind of family connection that he got here, that family feeling, was certainly very important to him. And it's, and it's clear in his poetry, he wrote so much about family, about childhood. Those were all very important things to him.